<laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting alongside for me, Alex. What is up? How are you doing, Alex? I'm pretty good, man. Oh, that's really good. I'm doing great. I feel yeah. great today. I yeah. got what they call on the internet big dick energy. Interesting. Yes, it right. is. Don't really know what it means. Never heard of it, but okay. I really never heard of it? No. Anyways, anyway. it, just in case you forgot, we are the Easy Achievers. We go over the previous week in gaming. If you like our content, please check us out on all of our podcast services, all the ones you like. If we're not on one, send us a tweet, email, something. We need to know what you guys are on so we can get on there. Uh, every week on YouTube as well. Every Friday is when we post. If you enjoy that, support us over on Patreon.com slash Easy Achievers. If you're a freeloader, don't worry. We are too. Uh, please, five star us everywhere. Like us. Uh, give us views. If you don't mind, go to our playlist on YouTube. Play all. Let it let it go. Don't You don't even have to listen to it. Hit me. Hit me. You don't got to listen to it. Just give us the view. Give us the watch time. That's what, you really, that's what we really need, the watch time. That's what we need. I'm going to go on the, on the side of the road. Like with those cardboard, like says, please support us, <laughs> and it just looks like sad. a homeless person. <laughs> I didn't say I was homeless. Oh, I I'm mean, just, I'm yeah. just gonna be. You see, there's the homeless guy right yeah, next to me. Yeah, he's right next to you. And then there's me. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's up, man? Yeah, man. He's like, oh, you down on your luck? Yeah, no, I just want people to watch my YouTube. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> he's like, uh oh, oh. We're gonna have we're gonna have like a like a block off. Like mm-hmm. it's, this is his block or my block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He gets really upset. He's like, well, this is kind of my thing. Yeah, right. We have a community of <laughs> blocks, and this one's mine. Getting back to it, our socials: Twitter at evm nine thousand and at Skater. Same for me on Instagram as well. You can also follow our official channel on Instagram and Twitter as well. Also, a Facebook page that I haven't posted to yet. I will get to that. <laughs> I don't know how to Facebook yet. I'm trying to figure it out. Once I've learned. I will then eventually get to that. Um, but let's get this started, get into the week. We are going to go over the new Xbox dashboard, a streamer plans the slut stream, Rockstar tax evasion, and the Call of Duty Killstreak controversy. But before we do that, Alex, what you been playing? I finally beat Red Dead Redemption 2. What? It's only been a year. Hey, <laughs> I had that situation with my Xbox it's been six months to where it wouldn't save my game Right. After like I was almost done with the game. Oh, no, you weren't. I didn't. I thought I was. I, okay. like I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was, right. and then it just crashed. It would mm-hmm. never save. Mm-hmm. I put like tw- no ten hours in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing of that saved. I got I upset. I get nowhere near being, beating the game. Yeah, I got upset. But but that's very annoying because it didn't just happen to you once, right? No, it, can happen, it happened like every time. Every and time, I, and right? I was like, hey, it's not the game. It has to be something yeah. with the Xbox. It, so it, I looked it up, and it kept reverting you. Correct? It wasn't yeah hard resetting you to the beginning of the game. It just no, no, kept no, reverting it, you to a previous save like yeah. five saves ago. Yeah. So I found. I mean, changed the Xbox. Finally right. fixed it. Finally, finally was able to finish. Finally, the game. that's good. Such a good game. What do you think? Honestly, uh huh. I th- it's hard, but okay. I think I like Arthur Morgan more than John. Interesting. Now I, I want to play the first one. So I've that's never your finished. biggest takeaway from this? No, no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I know the story is awesome. It, it actually connect, like, help me connect with those characters. Right. Um, I like Very the, heartfelt. Yeah, I felt, yeah, even yeah. though you're playing as bandits who are straight up murdering. people. Oh, of course. But they're like the nice bandits. Yeah. They're like we'll we'll kill like the bad people. <laughs> We're not going to kill the good people. I'm not going to lie. Spoilers. They eventually end up killing good people. Not going to lie. <laughs> Dutch. Ooh, crazy psychopath. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. I, I loved the game as well. Um, I don't know. It's been a long time. Like, you, they, like it. Uh, it's very interesting how they go into his psyche. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but he hits his head really hard at one point in the game. Where? Uh, it's kind of early on. Um, he hits his head. Mm-hmm. And that's when things kind of get really squirrely. And I'm oh. wondering if they were kind of referencing his head energy okay. to somehow breaking something in his head and that just yeah just destroyed made. him and make him a psychopath. Yeah. yeah. And that, that'd be kind of cool. I love the arc of Arthur starts off as mm-hmm. a kind of good bandit, I guess. You know what I mean? Like he's good, but he'll beat the crap out of people. Yeah. The gang asks him to, so he doesn't really care. And then eventually works into just to where becoming just... a, generally a nicer man. And then... Yep when facing his death eventually uh that tuberculosis man <laughs> that tb yeah <laughs> very good game i loved it um what did you think of the last third so you know you you, you 
you you get the very heartfelt goodbye with Arthur. Yeah, and then you pick up with John. So that was epi- all you're about that. the epilogue. Yes, um, I enjoyed it because uh-huh. uh, it does set up Red Dead One. Okay, because yeah, when it you does. like a long time ago, you know, when you start Red Dead One, spoilers, <laughs> the very first one of the first scenes, you see this man just get off a boat and going train. to an. Is it a po- yeah, train? I thought true. it was like a like a ferry boat mm-hmm. thing. Train. Oh, weird. Okay, I thought I have to replay it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're like. Where did he come from? Who is this guy? Right. So like it kind of leads into that, and you know where he's coming from. So now I want to go play Red Dead One because I'd never finished that one. Good game, still. Yeah, one so, of those games where like you can go back to as yeah. long as you understand the shooting is no, great, yeah, see, yeah, and if it's fine. similar to the two, the two, it's the exact yeah, same. Okay, then, yeah. <laughs> Dead Eye isn't as smooth. Okay, yeah, um, done. because it it sorry it starts off the same way where uh-huh. you can't just shoot people in Dead Eye. You have yeah. to mark. And oh yeah, do yeah, it, yeah, and then eventually you get. Okay, I'm just dead eyeing and shooting people in the face. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, I finished that, and I'm actually going to start or try to see, because I've never played a Fire Emblem game, so I'm going to mm, try this new one. Great segue to what I've been playing, Alex. Yeah? Nothing but Fire Emblem. I, I, you enjoying Constant it? Constant Fire Emblem. Love the Fire Emblem game. This uh, I'll call this a kind of a, a quick review. I'm not going to go too, too much into it, because it's one of those games where you like it or you don't. Yeah. Um, but you start off as a mercenary mm. and uh you were with your father who used to be an academy professor and he left it around the time he had you mm. and went on mercenary work and they find him again and they ask him to join back um okay. skipping parts of the story i don't want to spoil everything yeah but he comes back whatever gets you back to the academy you become a professor you then start picking a house you can pick between black eagles uh, golden deer and the blue lions you pick one of them and then you have a set amount of people in your house that you can choose from and then you uh have people outside of your house that you can recruit the recruiting um aspect is very cool you just have to work on two they you go up to them you ask if you can recruit them they'll give you two skills you have to have like the they'll say this person likes charisma or writing you have to get those th- two things up, and then you can come back and uh, eventually recruit them. That's a really cool aspect. Um, I don't know how far I am because I don't know how long the game is, but if I had to assume, I assume I'm at least a third of the way through. Okay. Or maybe close to half. I'm not sure. I've played a lot of this game. Okay. Um, really good. I love the combat. Combat is Fire Emblem, except the combat is Fire Emblem, but it's not. Okay. If that, it's a little confusing. Um the original Fire Emblems had what's called a triangle system. Okay. Lance beats, I think it was axe, axe beats sword, sword beats lance. Okay. Basically kind of like Pokemon. They made this much different, mm. but still kind of the same. So the weapon triangle is gone. Right. So everyone just kind of does damage. Mm-hmm. And um, there are points where you can um, use uh, uh, abilities that eventually get you like to break lance more and whatever. But... The combat is really good. It's much, mm, much more detailed than others because uh, uh, the the last fire emblems were lance axe. Sh- like as long as you hit the opposing person with whatever it is, mm-hmm. that was cool. This is much more tactic based because anyone can kind of hurt anybody. Okay. Um, and there's cool classes back. All the classes are back. I don't. I think there's one new class. I think brawler technically is new. Yeah, this um, is my first fire emblem game, so I'm giving it a try because I've heard like people that they say they really like this one and yeah i'm curious if you like it because fire emblem is very fire emblem is like i like to say yeah. where it's anime it's japan very and japanese see, in some ways see i like that stuff waifus I've, I've never been spandos a strategy guy so i gotta see if maybe i can counteract that with right. my anime love right and it's not like <laughs> nah. said, anime love. <laughs> um it's, and it's not like hardcore you're not playing civilization right yeah you know it's, that it's that pretty basic that strategy. I can't play. it's pretty I basic tried. strategy yeah um I'm having fun with it. I don't want to go too too much in it again because I don't want to spoil anything because it's very yeah. story based. The story is really cool. Yeah, no. So far, the intro, awesome. Yeah, like the it. intro is cool. Um, right now, best girl for me is Petra or um, Dorothea. There we go. That's her name, Dorothea. I think. Okay. <laughs> Those are best girls for me. All right. These games are all about who do you want to bang. Really? Those are the two people I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Like, oh, so there's, I like more? So Do I like? So there's romances in this oh, game. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so, oh, sorry. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, Fire Emblem Romance Glory. Okay. It started with Awakening. 
it's called support. Mm-hmm. The more you fight together, the more you hang out. Okay. The higher their support goes. Oh. Not only does the support make you stronger in battle when you fight together, mm-hmm. it makes you get support options so you can talk to each talk to them and you get like okay personal scenes with them yeah. and see how they interact. And see, I like that because I like creating bonds with characters. Like, no, yeah, how I did with the, like Dragon Age and stuff, depending on who mm-hmm. you want to romance stuff. Like yeah, that. it's full with that. Right now, like I have like a bunch of support talks like split okay. up, so I have to sit there and like watch all of those too. Okay. Cool. We're gonna get into this week. Oh, also Fortnite, of course. Apex, all the normal stuff. Yep. Yeah. I uh, mean, as of recording, as of today, we're recording on the thirty first. Yes. We so are. tomorrow will be the new season. Yes, it will. I'm very excited. Very excited for the new right. season. Um, but let's get into the news. All right. That was an ad. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty: Modern Warfare is multiplayer kill streaks revealed amid controversy. Um, this is over at GameStop by Oscar Deus. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare will bring back kill streak rewards in multiplayer. Publisher Activision has confirmed just ahead of the game's multiplayer reveal. However, one of the kill streaks options has caused some controversy. The three kill streak rewards announced so far are a Juggernaut Care Package, an Armored ass- Assault Vehicle, and the Chemical Weapon White Phosphorus. And it's that last one that has proven controversial. All three have been seen in some form or another in past Call of Duty titles, Juggernauts, were used extensively in the Modern Warfare subseries, as were light armor vehicles. Uh, When Phosphorus was previously used as a tactic coordinated in the Black Ops series, where it was called a small amount of damage on destination, but the framing of the weapon as a quote-unquote reward is what Mm -hmm. the article says, this time around paints it in somewhat different light. GameSpot has contacted Activision for comment. They also have a screenshot of a tweet. Uh, it's Call of Duty, their main page, tweeting out, Own the opposition. Reap the rewards. Killstreaks make a return in the Modern Warfare. Tune in August 1st for the full multiplayer premiere. Oh, so wow. we'll get well, it tomorrow. tomorrow. All right. Yeah, I yeah, did not know Very that. exciting day tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I'm off. Goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, going back to the article, in real life, the use of white phosphorus, also known as Willie Pete, Oh. Jeez, okay. Against civilians and in civilian areas contravenes the Genova Convention. Thereby Geneva. Cla- it is Geneva. Yeah. I said Genova from um, Final Fantasy VII, I think it's what yeah. it was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Geneva Convention. It's Geneva Convention, yeah. Thereby classing it as a war crime. Some Modern Warfare multiplayer maps take place in civilian areas, albeit without civilian characters present. Modern Warfare developer Infinity War told GameSpot recently that it doesn't want to shy away from hard-hitting issues in the upcoming shooter. Quote, today, Modern Warfare means that the war isn't just over there, uh, end quote, said the studio's narrative director, Taylor Kurosaki. Uh, quote, the war is everywhere. It's in our backyards. It's in the place that's only become a battlefield at a moment's notice. It's about enemies who don't wear uniforms. It's about the civilian collateral damage kind of being, unfortunately, part of the equation, end quote. Later in the same interview, Kurowski said the game will punish you for making mistakes on the battlefield. Quote, if you were a soldier and you actually uh, deployed into a theater of war and you shot down a bunch of innocent civilians, you would be arrested and court-martialed. The game kind of does the same thing. The game does not allow you to get away with going rogue. You have a command structure that you have to follow, orders that you have to follow, and you have to try. And you have to try to just be a bad apple. Okay. The game is going to smack you down for that. I see what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, Kuroski was talking about the game's single-player campaign, which also depicts child soldiers, among other serious topics. It's unclear if the multiplayer mode will treat the use of white phosphorus as harshly as it sounds as if the story mode will treat quote-unquote mistakes, is that this is the root of some of the latest controversy. What do you think about all that, Alex? So, to sum it up, okay. white, phosphor- white phosphorus is what exactly? White phosphorus is a gas chemical weapon. Okay. When you deploy it onto people, <clears throat> it straight up melts their skin. Jesus. Um, okay. And it's a, uh, by the Geneva Convention, which is what the UN uh, has constructed uh-huh. to basically have lawful war, basically. Okay. So there are kind of laws put in place. So you have to follow certain laws mm. in order for the war not to be straight up like... I guess you could say bath, against war, against oh. world peace or whatever. I don't know. It's kind of strange to have rules yeah, on war, which like, are just awful uh, in general. But okay. they want at least boundaries. If you're going to kill people, I guess you want to kill them specific ways. So they don't yeah, want so you to use this is like a way that they don't want them to. Yeah. So you don't okay. want to use chemical weapons. Chemical weapons are banned. Yeah. I believe you can't use any chemical weapons. Uh, okay. If I remember correctly in the Geneva Convention. Um, so, they're, so, they're, this, they're, so this is specifically speaking to... Uh, you cannot use it against civilians specifically as well. Mm-hmm. So you cannot use the, um, is this any in kind the of weapon life? against civilians like that. So specifically chemical weapons. Okay. Um, 
And I, I think there's also laws against actual straight up civilians. I don't want to get into this uh, because I'm not the most intelligent about, the, uh, about all the laws of Geneva Convention. I just know that um, a few rules are like you can't kill a prisoner of war. You can't like use chemical weapons against civilians and stuff like that. Yeah. This is generally going into, I guess people are upset because there is white phosphorus in there yeah. and you can use it in chem- uh, civilian areas that technically you're oh, breaking okay. like laws and it's really messed up that you can uh, use this I gas mean, weapon. If I had to give a quick opinion, it's kind of weird that we're choosing guns and uh, giant vehicles are okay to kill computers with, but not the white phosphorus. That's also kind of like fake in its own reality because yeah. it's like I'm still using it in a video game. But I also get the opposite view with it saying, well, they are they are posting this as a reward. Like you're yeah. getting a chemical weapon as a reward for killing things, but also we're killing people in the game anyways. Yeah. That's, it's so all. I think I think this debate kind of just circles around each other because like the yeah, yeah, nature of the debate is also the end of the debate and yeah. it just kind of circles. So it's I don't really I mean to me in a video game the chemical weapon is no different from the I mean, from nuking someone. And nu- you, I mean, we used to be able to in, nuke yeah, and people twenty five kills, kills and you'd be able to kill ev- and just nuke yeah, everyone. You just nuke and you what's, win the game. Yeah, what's <laughs> I mean that's it's, it's very interesting that the nuking was okay, yeah. but the white phosphorus is. But I get it. It's specifically to make sure you're not depicting war crimes, even though the single player campaign so. has depicted war crimes before. I believe Modern mm-hmm. Warfare Two did, yeah, because they were they were so interrogating that, a well, that in the, a person that uh, one of the scenes. I remember this because I watched a game theory of okay. it. Uh, ph- uh, phenomenal YouTube series, by the way. Game theory um, is awesome, and he made a video way back when uh, where he depicts war crimes that call of duty made mm. so in theory they should be court-martialed like the article okay. speaks um like where one scene depicts um them using a chemical weapon on a guy who's mm-hmm. um uh unarmed like he they capture him in there interrogating him because they're trying to find where they have all the weapons so he, mm. he breaks it and they all have masks on so he breaks the chemical weapon and throws it on the ground and he, oh, and yeah, he, yeah, he makes yeah, them talk yeah. and he talks to him and then he throws the mask on the ground and then you guys yeah. walk away so if this stuff has happened before so I'm very curious on why this specific instance it's bad um, but I think uh, I think we're also looking for not we specifically more activists is looking for another no Russian kind of going thing remember no Russian yeah you I think about, yeah you the, the awful one machine that we just kind of mow well, down an airport wasn't there, full of people well, didn't say didn't they say that there was a scene that was very similar to that and so they there's a scene where you're well, I don't know if they got I, I didn't I don't know what or maybe they honestly. just said that they I know they one. I know there's a child troop you know there's child civilian ones in the game yeah. I've heard of that I heard you have to make a decision where a woman is grabbing for something and you have to be able to figure out is it a baby or is it a gun and then you have a choice oh, of shooting him i think whoa, okay. i don't know like there's pretty uh Ooh, serious shit. topics in this game and i'm very excited honestly and that sounds messed up no, but yeah, i'm excited you, well, to experience see these things yeah because um, i mean a lot of these experiences are coming from the real life experiences that right and i'm sure they go through i'm sure they talk to veterans of course and yeah and discuss things like that again i'm very excited for the game and you know like you were saying last night when we were t- uh, playing apex mm. i also haven't been very excited for a call of duty um in a long time yeah. um uh, we've been over that or uh, in this podcast before but i think infinite warfare was the only one i was excited about and i got disappointed by that so mm. i'm excited to get into this my uh, yeah. modern warfare's were always my favorites oh yeah like I don't think I ever, any of them has ever honestly been as good. the only really my probably favorite, original Black Ops and Black Ops Two. Yeah, I was about to say my favorite Treyarch Call of Duty was probably War at War and one of yeah. the Black Ops. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, I I've love always Black been, Ops One and Two. Yeah, didn't get into three or four. Yeah, I loved them. Yeah, because they had Reznov. He was always one of my favorite characters. Reznov was cool. Reznov was cool. Yeah, bring him back. It's crazy yeah. that he was like. I mean, they brought part Price. of your imagination, right? No, uh, that was two. Uh, That's right. He yeah. was in one. He died. Uh, he died. But then in two, then you in remember two, him. Yeah, well, in two, yeah, you kind of see like a ghost, or it's, it's, it's like messing That's with your head. That's right. That's right. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, which is good. I need to go back to those. God, yeah, yeah. I I hope they make this new one. Um, this called fresh. Day. You know what I mean? Like no, kind of yeah. like oh, I this is a nice up. palate cleanser. For yeah. Of the I mean, it looks good. Kind of use this as a jumping board. Now my thing is, I wonder since they brought price back, I wonder if they're gonna bring a uh, ghost back. That'd be cool. That'd be yeah. That'd be cool. They, they said, they said soap back. is coming back. McTavish, soap. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, they said I think he's coming back because I think they showed a picture. Of interesting, him. interesting. I'm curious on on how far they go into the Call of Duty lore as it yeah. is. Um, 
moving on uh oh by the way if you guys have any insights on that especially if you're a veteran we chat on yeah. twitter give us your perspective i'm going on a perspective of a guy who's never i shot a gun once as a boy scout so <laughs> i i'm definitely definitely not equipped to give discussions on war crimes so right. if anyone else out there has a, an opinion on this story or any other story we go over please twitter at evm9000 or at easy achievers or at crazy flip skater you can hit us up there scream at us whatever all right, moving on to uh, 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 Rockstar North has paid no UK corporation tax in 10 years. This is by <laughs> The Guardian. Uh, uh, this is uh, by Keza McDonald. She's a fantastic writer, by the way. Uh, Rockstar North, the Edinburgh-based developer of Grand Theft Auto, has paid no corporation tax over the past 10 years despite making billions in revenue for its parent company, Take-Two Interactive, while claiming more than $42 million in tax rec- A report from the investigation think tank Tax Watch. He uh, estimates Rockstar Games operating profit at $5 billion with a B between 2013 and 2019, during which time the company released Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2. Rockstar North is part of Rockstar Games, of course. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V has sold more than 100 million copies, making it one of the most profitable entertainment products of all time. It racked up $1 billion in its first three days. In its first three days, it racked up $1 billion. I forgot about that. Jesus. According to Take-Two Earnings Report, GTA 5's online component, GTA Online, has generated hundreds of million dollars in revenue, which I believe wholeheartedly. Uh, but the company paid no corporation tax between two th- 2009 and 2018. It received $42 million in tax credits from the government's video game tax relief scheme which was set up in 2014 to bolster the UK's 5 billion games industry, much of which is made up of small and medium-sized developers. The sum is equivalent to 19% of the total relief paid to the entire UK games industry since 2014 Tax Watch reports. That's going to kind of sum it up. I'm not going to go all into this, but that generally uh, gives you the revenue that they're making and also the benefit of the tax evasion. Air quotes, they're not actually tax evasing. Mm -hmm. They are using totally legal loopholes to not pay taxes uh, i thought that was just an incredible story to hear this reminds me yeah, of the same in america where um, amazon also did not pay tax uh here as well it's just it's just it's a crazy and a very interesting story to me um it's funny because uh people were kind of making a stink of this uh it's funny because uh if i was in their shoes i would actually do the exact same thing Oh, that yeah. saves them money, right? If I had to wait legally, of course, no, if to you could legally pay no not taxes. Pay taxes, yeah, of course. I mean, when, when, when? I mean, it's for example, like that, the Fortnite World Cup kid, three million dollars. We'll, we'll get to him. We'll get to him. Yep. Actually, Do, good segue. Was, yeah, I, I, skipping ahead. A sixteen-year-old gamer is three million reacher after winning the Fortnite World Cup. This is by Mary Hambert over on Business Insider. By the way, this has been hilarious because we've been seeing people not talk about games, talk about why this kid won three million dollars. <laughs> There's a hilarious tweet over by um, Fox News. Okay. Uh, they made um, a. Uh, I guess they were talking about it. I didn't watch the clip. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not wasting my time because mm-hmm. um, uh, I know what Fortnite is. Uh, and they have a the two things. They have the top. Fortnite uh, person wins $3 million, and then at the bottom, Fortnite is a game where you can hide in bushes and win the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because they can, like, they're trying to, it sounds like they're trying to, like, discredit the win almost or something. It's a really weird take. Um, uh, the highlights of the article, see, uh, 16 win, yeah, of course. The finals took place in New York on Saturday and Sunday. 50 duos and 100 solo players competed in the share of a $30 million dollar prize pool the largest prize pool in the history of the esports uh the gentleman is called uh his name is kyle giersdorf mm-hmm. won the solo event um of the competition um he's known online as uh buga 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 yeah buga yeah. probably giersdorf has nearly two hundred thousand followers on twitter 140 followers on twitch and 187 followers on youtube very impressive numbers for a gentleman that is only 16 good for him um, U.S. teen Kyle Gorsdorf won the solo event at the competition, which took place on Sunday at the Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York City. More than 40 million players participated in the qualifying events for the final, but only 50 duos and 100 solo players made it through the last round, and were in a chance to win a cut of $30 million. Gearsdorf, who is known online as well, that goes into uh, he told the BBC the prize money. <laughs> he told the BBC that he planned to save the prize money. Quote: All I want is a new desk and maybe a desk for my trophy. End quote. <laughs> Jesus, that is very wholesome of him. That's very nice. If I'm if if I was oh, God, 16 yeah. back in the day, I'd be like, I'm getting so many strippers. So you guys. In about four months when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> he was later locked out of his social media accounts after they were hacked. 
Wow. All Interesting. Right. I guess people were either salty or happy for him, and they yeah. just wanted to hack his account. Honestly, salty. <laughs> Probably salty. Fortnite is the most popular video game in the world with more than 250 million registered players. While the game is free to play, players can use V-Bucks to purchase cosmetic items and unlock features in Fortnite. I just thought that was interesting to read. I know all you guys know that. I thought that was just interesting to read that Business Insider is like, hey, this is what Fortnite is. It's really big, and it makes a lot of money, but it's free, but it's not. So, like, yeah. it's free, but, like, you can pay stuff, but it makes them a lot of money. $2.4 yeah. billion in microtransactions. So, like, we're just telling, like, the general audience, like, okay, this is what it is. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, and then they go into basically, you know, explaining what the game is. Um, they, they bring up when Prince Henry criticized the game. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Criticized the game at a mental health conference, which... Uh, Interesting of him to bring up. We're not going to get into that, though. Uh, that's old news. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. This Very cool. Um, what Alex was referencing to, though, is um, I actually don't have the article open right now, but I read the article where he's basically paying half of that in taxes because yeah. that's how taxes work. Um, I believe prize money goes under, I think, uh, the, almost the same thing as a donation. And donations are almost 50% taxed. So he's almost immediately lost half of that money. Which sucks. Yeah. Which sucks. Well, he said he was going to save it anyway. Yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, if he, if at 16 years you have a million dollars, you can literally invest all that, and then you pretty much can double it if you have a really good um, yeah. uh, accountant. Mm-hmm. Um, I could do a lot with $1.5 million. Um, Alex, what would you have done if you were 16 and got $1.5 million? Honestly, I didn't have any bills, so I would put that thing in the bank. <laughs> would you have? Honestly, see, okay. at sixteen. No, I mean, of course, I would have spent a good bit of. You it. had better no, money I, sense than I did, I think. And see, I, I don't wouldn't really remember. And see, I wouldn't spend a good bit of it like on cars or anything because I'm sixteen. 16 what the hell? Yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do? Honestly, I would have probably buy a bike. A, 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 shit. <laughs> a really, I mean, a really good TV. Right. Probably a bunch of games. Oh God, I don't you know. You haven't hit a dent in that 1.5 million yet. Exactly. So. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people say don't put all that money in the bank because the bank will screw you. But I mean, no. I don't know. I, I mean, would just save it all. I put it I'm in a good savings. Who would say that? Because that's yeah. not how it works at all. I, I heard somebody tell me once, and I was like, no. If you know the right bank, they'll uh, yeah. they'll give you interest on that money oh, too. God, yeah, yeah. Um, they'll, help, they'll help you out because you know, uh, you're you're with them. Screw it. I'll do a plug. There's a really cool bank called Ally. Okay. Uh, that is an online bank, and um, mm. they have a savings account that gives you like like i think a full percentage back every month some crazy number like that okay. I, I i'm trying to get one because it's insanely good mm. but honestly i have no idea what i would have done i, I would have blown it probably <laughs> i don't feel like 16. i would if i had full control i don't know at 16 i, think I, I wasn't talked to you with you because you would talk to me about like dude what do i need to buy and i'd be like don't well <laughs> as a as a 16 year old i don't think i would have had the money sense to even buy anything that's what i was saying so like, like everything what, i would have bought wouldn't have hit it like down. right now i probably would have bought it my father probably would have been like hey buy a house yeah like he would have just been like hey buy me a house and then we'll just have the value sitting there and then we can sell the house later or something like that you know it's yeah just some, some no yeah that. your parents would have ju- totally jumped in and be yeah. like yeah this is mine now very no. uh heartfelt video went on twitter kind of went viral of um uh, he came in fifth place. A, gen- uh, a, a gentleman came in fifth place, mm-hmm. and they uh, st- uh, someone videotaped him meeting his father right after the win, mm-hmm. and they just hugged. And uh, uh, I, I think they spoke Japanese or Korean. I don't remember, but okay. he was just saying like, "It's all yours." Patting him on the back, like, "Oh, yeah. it was really, it was really nice. And it was really cool." He won nine hundred thousand dollars. Damn, even for so, fifth. I mean, that's fifth, cool. I mean, there's thirty million to throw around, so people are making. Oh yeah, yeah. Just yeah. placing. I think just getting there, you're guaranteed a certain amount of money too. I mean, that that's cool. That's awesome. I lo- okay, good for them. Good for them. I'm very happy. Fortnite. This also helps gaming in whole because this tells all the regular people, hey, gaming is a big deal. Yeah, gaming is a big deal. This is this and Overwatch. <laughs> I think really. Yeah, helps. they're really big in esports. Um, where Fortnite has like big f- prize pools where that gets eyeballs, and then Fortnite has the actual team based. Mm. Uh, 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 city-based teams where that's much more easier for someone to look at than, let's say, Fortnite. Or maybe the other way around where Fortnite's easier because there's only single people that you know of versus a whole team. I'm curious on how esports will evolve um, to maybe get even half the viewership of, let's I say, mean, an God, NFL or something. It's like been that. out for a while. I mean, didn't it kind of start with Unreal Engine, Unreal Tournament? I think that's the birthplace. I think yeah, that's where everyone Quake says and it. And then, the- yeah, Quake... And then you, from Quake, you kind of move into Halo. Uh, mm-hmm. th- I think it was 3 was really that started it. So from Quake probably I think to two Halo. Did a, did a good bit, wasn't it? Well, I think Halo 2 was just popular online. 
online game. You and your ads. Little sneak peek in what we're talking about next. I hate these news. They all. It's always auto playing everything. I think I need to download an odd blocker or something. No, an ad blocker. This is getting infuriating. Just mute your computer. Infuriating. Or I can just mute the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I am in mid muting. There we go. There I you go. It. I'm an idiot. Uh, moving on. I forgot my place and everything. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, Fortnite season ten starts tomorrow, Thursday, August first. Um, the new season coming out. They've had a lot of little teasers. I'm very interested in. Um, uh, I'll go from the top. Zero in is the the main one. Uh, Twist time. Which is kind of a, it looks like kind of like a skull woman mm-hmm. and a drift guy from season, I think it was five or something like that. Um, if you know Fortnite, you know what he, and, it, and they also tease kind of a time aspect to the game where they show Dusty Depot, the original Dusty Depot, and they say look back and then look forward and they're showing like a mech. Uh, very exciting. Very exciting. This also comes uh, right off the giant mech battle we just had too, um, where a mech fought a giant monster live in the game yeah which was yeah. dope if you haven't seen that just watch that this is cool everyone reacting and watching this giant mech destroy this monster yeah that's pretty cool also as of today the trailer for season 10 also has released um i haven't watched it it i uh, just saw a few snippets and it looks like uh it's just it's cementing hey this is a time-based season um i saw a really cool uh like still of um uh, you know the Delaware River crossing of the Delaware River, Alex? It's with George Washington mm-hmm. and the, the American Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, they have uh, kind of like a George Washington-inspired kind of piece happening when, like while they're scrolling through time. It's really cool. I'm very, ex- very excited for this new season. Um, and we'll see how all that goes out goes down tomorrow, too. Yeah. Uh, Obsidian's new game, Outer Worlds, is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Which is crazy. This is over by Engadget by Chris Holt. Obsidian has already revealed its Fallout-esque sci-fi RPG, The Outer Worlds, will debut uh, debut on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 October 25th. Sometime after that, it'll land on Switch 2. Nintendo's console is less powerful than Sony and Microsoft's one. and won't pack as much of a putz as a typical PC, but so it remains to be seen how well The Outer Worlds will run on the, uh, on the hybrid. For this uh, version, Obsidian is teaming up with Virtuous, which has helped uh, during the likes of Dark Souls Remastered and Final Fantasy XII's The Zodiac Age to the Switch. There was no firm release date as of yet. The Outer Worlds arrival on Switch, but the UK eShop pegs the release date for some time this year. Very exciting. It's stuff. exciting. Very exciting. I mean, very the, interesting that uh, Outer Worlds is coming to everything. Still yeah. owned by uh, Microsoft, of course. Obsidian is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very excited to see how good this is. And I'm curious on, I'm assuming Obsidian owns the IP for that. So I'm curious yes. if an Outer Worlds 2 would be a Microsoft exclusive or not. Um, Microsoft seems to be I, really buddy-buddy with Switch. So I guess maybe it would depend on both. how good this one will sell. Yeah, that too. It, uh, I'm getting a lot of buzz where it's really good apparently yeah. by specific people saying it's supposed to be phenomenal and, and it might be game of the year and everything. So I'm I'm excited. It looks like, uh, like they said, Fallout-esque. Um, it'd be crazier if it's better than 4 um, because 4... More Fallout 4? Yeah, because mm-hmm. 4 was just more Fallout 3. But yeah. I'm, I'm excited if they kind of revamp and kind of breathe some energy into fallout because i just want them to show some more stuff i want to see what th- this game is all about yeah me too but i don't want to get too expo ex- like, like what is you it? don't want to spoil yourself yeah, yeah 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 you don't want to spoil yourself too too much i can't remember did they say what was there, was there a release date for this game? october 25th uh, october sorry yeah yeah so it's close it's very August, close i'm very three, I'm, three months I'm, I'm excited trepidatiously excited though I'm not i'm not trying to like jump in yet mm-hmm I want to see a little more, and then be like, okay, we'll buy this. Mm-hmm. Elijah, it's what? August tomorrow. What? It's August t- tomorrow. Oh, like, yeah. Like, Time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's we're fast. Getting, we're getting close to these, uh, you know, uh, these, uh, these, these games. Big, yeah. Yeah, these because games are going to, like, you I know, mean, burn Star a hole Wars. in my pocket. We got Outer Worlds. Yep. We got other games. <laughs> Borderlands. Games. There we go. <laughs> Borderlands. Um, moving on. No, there's a lot. There is a lot. Uh, be interested. Uh, we should go over like top games that we're excited for and what yeah. we think will what we think like will be our favorite and so. Um, Twitch streamers plan quote sluts stream to where is a rareness of online harassment. This is by Cecilia D. Cecilia Cecilia 
the uh, uh, it's it's Cecilia D Anastasio. Okay, cool. That sounds that's, that's yeah. a really cool name actually. Uh, it sounds Italian. Tomorrow, a veteran Twitch streamer is organizing a day called, quote, Slut Stream for women gaming online to band together to deflate the power of the word, quote, slut. For over a decade, the word slut has been under siege. At annual slut walks, I didn't know that was a thing, thousands march in, quote, sexy attire to protest the idea that women's clothing or lifestyles could be any way invite sexual violence. In high school, teenagers are better than the notion that young women who violate dress codes are distracting or unfit for education. Now Twitch streamers are launching their own effort to highlight how the word, quote, slut or slut shaming generally can it make it hard to live and work online. Quote, I've had a lot of people ask, why call it slut stream? That's just offensive, said Casey. Uh, qu- uh, her name online, I think, is Casey Tron Kevinus, a longtime Twitch streamer with 500,000 followers. Uh, quote, the whole idea of calling it slut stream is taking the name back and giving it less fo- uh, power. Kevinus, who has mockingly referred to herself as a quote twitty streamer that's dope made a name for herself on twitch around 2013 trolling and mocking twitch culture quote people who are upset about female streamers wearing low-cut tops will see my stream and say oh yeah she's making fun of female streamers acting like sluts for views uh cavernous told kotaki for a 2018 profile quote the way i see it is it's making fun of the people who get upset about that uh illicit illicit Eliciting. Mm. Thank you. Eliciting fury and vitriol from self-serious gamers. Cavernous has for years sat, uh, satirized the widespread stereotype that women on Twitch are leveraging their goods for clicks. And again, uh, I think this is, it says, so what day was it? Say the date of the stream. Yeah, it doesn't say the date of the stream. It says tomorrow. So this being what? Monday. So I guess it already happened Tuesday. Maybe. That sucks. Kind of wanted to watch it. Anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah, it did, it did. So it took place Tuesday. Yeah, over the phone. Yeah, yeah. I thought this was just a cool thing to bring up. Mm-hmm. Dope. Uh, good for them wanting to take actions. Uh, I can't imagine how hard it is to be a woman online yeah. because it's kind of hard to be a man online. So I can't imagine actually being a woman mm-hmm. and uh, and having to experience the kind of gross vitriol you get with being online. I hate also bringing this up. Um, I find the notion every, when everyone kind of makes fun of the internet for being negative, mm-hmm. you're kind of just feeding into the negativity that way. So I try not to like give it air for lack of a better word. Um, so I try just to like it. So my, my thing is the internet sucks. Yeah. Talking about the internet sucks is not making the internet better. And also the internet doesn't suck. It's actually really great. Um, but yeah, I find it, it's uh, just, it's the, it's a lot of people who make it. Well, yeah. The way that is. And also, I mean, you can be anonymous. Mm-hmm. As long as you as long as you can be anonymous, people are going to be mean. Yeah. Because you, that you have no it's repercussions. Just, it's just because they can. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of all this? Let's stream. Um, do you have an opinion at all? I mean, you can, of course, not I have mean, an um, I'm glad that there's taking, uh, is it uh, in a way taking a stand for it? Of course. Yeah. yeah. It's taking a stand against um, yeah, the words, I mean, right? In Because uh, I feel like some, some of them, I mean, yeah, they don't have a... And I mean, also, it's, it's hard not, for it's us to give. Them, so. And also, it's hard for us to give our opinions on this. We are two men. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been called a slut. And if I had, it was trying someone being funny. Yeah, that also it's kind of cool for us. That if you could be a man slut. Yeah, you know, you're like. A, but is, there is no negative repercussions for I, that, right? I, no, I guess. someone calls me a slut, my feelings are hurt. I assume if a woman is called a slut, it, no, yeah, feelings are hurt, right? Yeah, I don't know. Um, which sucks. Yeah, I mean, because it's just not the, their fault. the the one thing I'm really behind in this specifically. Um, and I want to read it again, actually. Uh, where is it? And my thing is, I'm wondering if, because, um, you know, there's the streamers that are being, a, I guess, would it be attacked that way? Yeah. Okay. If they were being attacked that way and they're not trying to be that way, and then there's other streamers or Who actually are? blatantly doing it I follow, just so they can get viewers. I follow, a, well, see, I, f- I find that uh, statement interesting. So we'll get into that after okay. I say my statement. Um, I follow Lena the Plug. That's right on okay. Twitter. She's a porn star. Okay, and she's hilarious. Um, and I follow her, and of course I'm following her because she's attractive. I'm not acting like I'm just following her for because she's <laughs> funny. Anyways, um, uh, she I, does she? God, now I'm now I'm messed up. I'm pretty sure she Twitch streams sometimes. Okay. Um, and let's just give and even if she doesn't, let's just give her a reason. So in theory, she is 
uh, using her body to bring people in, right? Mm-hmm. Cam girls are, in theory, right? In, mm-hmm. in fact, bringing people in to look at their bodies, of course. Okay. But I found it very interesting because uh, I was listening to a podcast once and they brought this up, but they also been like, well, th- you, you get them with their bodies, but they're not just going to, they're not, how do you get them to stay and spend money? Yeah. So they, of course, these women are smart in a way where they show off their bodies and then all right, hey, you know, you have to have a personality to back it up, of course, yeah. right? I think it's very regressive when you just say, oh, you're a titty streamer, so that's the only yeah. reason people are following you because of your boobs. It eh, uh, no. doesn't make sense. No, because, I mean, somebody can go in there and be like, oh, yeah, they're hot. Carry on. Yeah. Or, but, like, that's, that doesn't keep you the follower. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, you like, Unless you're, unless those, 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 you know, guys are like just real perverts. And of that's course, look. there's of course that where people are just staring at them like yep. a bunch of weirdos. That's like all they want to do is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, uh, back to the original point, I wanted to bring this up. This is something I am vehemently for. Um, at annual slut walks, thousands march in sexy attire to protest the idea that women's clothing or lifestyles could be any way invite sexual violence. I'm very much of the notion that no matter what she's wearing, she's not inviting you to touch her or talk yeah. to her. So uh, it's very rude to assume uh, yeah. just because a woman has a low-cut tank top. Yeah, just because the way they Of course, dress. they are showing the part of their body off. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it does not mean that they are in any way inviting you to comment on her or something. Yeah. Like I don't know. Just I mean, it's a, two I mean, it, I mean, just it's a, two men that have everybody no, has their own free will. They could do whatever oh, they want. Of course, yeah. And, and, and then, of extent. course, this is just two men giving their perspective on this. Yeah. Can't I have only so much perspective on this specific issue? Yeah. Um. Moving on. Sony says it might raise PlayStation prices if Trump's tariffs with China go through. This is over on Gamespot by Eddie McCooch. PlayStation consoles might get more expensive for shoppers in the United States during an earnings call today. Sony's chief financial officer Hiroki. Totaki said it will need to increase the price of PlayStation consoles sold in America if President Trump's proposed tariffs on electronics made in China, including game consoles, do indeed go through. This was reported on by the Wall Street Journal. According to the Wall Street Journal, most, that is in quotes, most of the companies of the PlayStation consoles are made in China. Components. Oh, sorry. Yeah, components. My bad. Components. Uh, quote, we believe and therefore have told the U.S. government that higher taxes would ultimately damage the U.S. economy, end quote. Uh, to talk, I said. Um, and this is a reference back to, if you remember, each major um, console maker. So mm-hmm. Phil Spencer, uh, head of PlayStation and head of Nintendo, both signed a letter to the U.S. government saying, mm-hmm. don't do the tariffs or at least expend us from the tariffs because if you do that, we're gonna have to make it cost more, and it already costs too much. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So it goes in. Yeah. Earlier this year, t- uh, Trump announced a plan to increase tariffs from 10 percent to 25 percent on electronics Jesus. made in China, and shipped to the United States. These ter- uh, export tariffs are not finalized as of yet, and the U.S. and China are coming back to the negotiating tables this week. This new comment from Tutaki comes from after. Yeah. This. Yeah. This tells me about this. A 25 percent uh, price increase in consoles to match a tariff cost would likely put a new video game console out of reach for many American families who we expect to be in the market for a console this holiday season. Very interesting that they're coming so far out to say, hey, uh, we don't want to do this because this yeah. is going to make our stuff more expensive. Yeah. And when the, and that shows and that shows everyone that, like, you know, they don't want it to be, you know, not more being, expensive. Yeah, more expensive. Because they 100% believe, like, well, and also, they want to be able. They want the families to be able to, to afford it, right? And also, uh, company wise, like they're not getting the tariff money, so of course yeah. they want it down. Like, well, don't put the tariffs on there because you're just gonna make us lose value. Yeah, because if yeah, if, the, if it's higher, they're not gonna be able to sell them. Mm. That means they're just gonna lose way more money. And I'm curious if um them. they'll try to move because Nintendo, if I remember correctly, did that. They moved uh their uh, construction of their systems to mm-hmm. out of China. Yeah. Uh, to kind of counteract the tariffs. So I'm know. curious if uh, PlayStation try to follow suit. Maybe there's too much. So that maybe mm-hmm. they can't move it. Gears on how this will go down. Hopefully the tariffs won't go through because that just means uh, the PlayStation's are going to go up. Now, to be fair, I'm sure there's many other political science reasons why maybe that he wants it to go up. Of course, he wants to boost our own economy, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into that right now. But hopefully it doesn't because I want more people to have game consoles, not less. Yeah. 
Um, and on that note, we just wanted to put this in here. PS4 passes 100 million as of a couple days ago. Um, uh, as of yesterday, yes. Uh, PlayStation passes 100 million units sold, and Switch reaches 36.9 million, which is insane. Good for both of those people. That's a lot yeah. of uh, PS4s. Technically, um, PS4 is the fastest selling console, I'm pretty sure, uh, by a month because PS2 hit yeah. 100 million technically a month longer. Oh, no, 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 that, now, now it's, it's you. Now it's, me. Now it's you. <laughs> Mute it. <laughs> I, I, I did. Uh, it gets, it's Fire Emblem, so you'll be, you'll be happy. Fire Emblem. Yeah, I'm having literally the exact same ad put on mine. It's just it's <laughs> muted, so you can't hear it. <laughs> I hate these things. Uh, but well, how, many, how much did uh, PS2 make? 150 million? Or yes. sell? Yes, they sold 150 million, which think? most people uh, think it won't be reached because the reason the PS2 reached that much was because they were also DVD players for a lot of people. They were a mm. cheap DVD player. Yeah, I think but a lot of people like, use PS4s as Blu-ray players. Yep, good point. I mean, the DVDs are a long way. I didn't. Who uses a regular DVD anymore other than my wife? <laughs> which, I'm sorry, babe, <laughs> but I hate these DVDs. <laughs> it would be interesting if that notion stands, right? Because you are correct. People use it as Blu-ray players. Yeah. Um, I'm sure plenty of people use Blu-ray. I'm sure plenty of people use it as streaming boxes. Yeah. Because they prefer to have this over a Chromecast maybe oh, or something God, like yeah. that. I mean, because they have the option to do either put the Blu-ray in or just stream. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very interesting. I'll be curious if we hit 150. A lot of people are saying there's no way, only because PS2 sold that because specifically it was a cheap DVD. Now, was it 150 by the end of their cycle to where they're not making anymore? Yes. Okay. I I think they they ended at 150, I'm pretty sure. I think they'll pass that. Really? Yeah. You think they're going to sell another 50 million? I mean, how long? They've done... They've done... It it lasts until they end production. so in okay, theory, that could be how, how long was how, another okay. five years? Maybe? How many years mm, four, was PS three or, or PS two like in production? Uh, that's a good question. Or <laughs> let's say even PS three. You want to bing that, Alex? I don't know. All right. How long was PS two in production? Because then you can just okay, look at PS 3s release date. Uh, well, let's see. PS okay. PS four. Okay. They've been out since what? Twenty November twenty thirteen. Yep. It's been six years. Mm-hmm. So well, I'll give it another well, three years, and that's the half. That's that's also not fair because PS three sucked. For a lot of reasons. Uh, okay. Like, for the sale process. I'm not sp- okay. saying specifically, like, games or anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying specifically what's inside of the system. Well, now, the I sale mean, processing was messed up a bunch yeah. of games well, and made it really hard to develop for and stuff like that. Well, I even so, just, I don't think that's fair. Well, to not like, even PS3. Then just, uh, we'll just say PS4 I think came PS, out 2013. I think PS2 is a good thing. Yeah. Oh, when did when did PS3 come out? And then when did PS2 production stop? Because I'm assuming production stopped a year yeah, in. We're assuming, well... I mean, PS didn't PS3 just end, or how? When did they end? Oh God, they they had to have ended. They probably ended the first year of the system, right? Uh, maybe I, even I can't sooner. Remember. I doubt they kept making those things. Like, they sold good units. I'm not saying the PS3 no, no, didn't yeah, sell yeah. well. Of course it did. Um, they and sold more than 360. See. I'm trying to figure, see if it'll tell me anything. I can't find it. Okay, real quick. Yeah, it's also a very weird thing to bing. No, yeah. Um, PS3 were to be discontinued in New Zealand on September tw- uh, 2015. Sony confirmed that the sales of PS3 were to be dis- discontinued in New Zealand, but the systems remain in production in other markets. Shipments of new units. So in New United- Zealand specifically. So, right? oh, so it, it was October at the end of October 2016. October 2016 is when PS3 ended. Yeah. Yeah, so this is right here. Shipments, shipments of new units to the United States ended in October 2016. Wow. So three years after. So we're getting what? PS5 possibly next year? That's uh, 100% let's say, next let's year. Say, okay, 20, yeah. Let's say 2020. So, it ends so 2023. 2023. So we have... We have three, four years yeah. to get another 50 million. And we've done... hundred million in, in six 60. years. So half so, of that. So, they so have it's, to get it's right on half. point. So if they... If they can... If they maintain the same amount of sales... Yeah. For fiscal years. See now, my thing is, guess. is uh, PS4. I'm assuming it's included the regular, the re- or the slim so and I'm pro. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it does. That's, yeah, because there's I'm no way sure. they've sold originals <laughs> 100 million. That's no, no. It's uh, that's a good point. Yeah. They yeah. Mo- they so I think it's all I, all the. Do models. they think they? Yeah, probably. I would think that they're gonna once PS5 of course comes out, they'll discount this one, and people who can't afford the PS5. They would definitely get a PS4. It would be insane they if they PS4. put this thing to two hundred dollars. They can't. Because I mean, no way they can. I mean, how many they... people? Let's say how many people come into GameStop and be like, "I still have my PS3. I want to upgrade to PS4, but I can't afford it." Good, good how many people. Ti- how many? Yeah, okay. I've heard a lot of people do like, "Oh, can I have a 360?" 
because I don't want to pay yeah, exactly double so, the price for uh, Xbox One. Yeah. So see how much how much is a uh, PS4 right now? Let's say preon or I mean because I so preon yeah. uh, because it would uh, preon would be two nineteen. Okay. I feel like it would be one fifty. Two. I feel like it'll be like one fifty. Jeez. All right. Yeah. I mean that would be insane if it is. I'm a I'm I'm making a bet. Pre owned, huh? Or brand new? Well, no. Well, for oh, oh pff, I, I'm assuming pre owned. So pre owned will eventually go down to one fifty. Yeah. And you're thinking brand new goes what? Because technically a pre owned sale does not go to the units sold. And yeah, I guess well, two hundred. We're for talking brand new. Yeah, let's talk brand new units because pre owned doesn't do yeah, anything. Yeah, two hundred. Because what is it? Three hundred right now? Yes, two hundred. Jesus. That'd be awesome. Yeah. If, it, if it hits 200, yes. so many people would be able to buy that. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, they'd be able to justify that. I think yeah. it would go to 250, though. Yeah. It would go to 250, and then... Um, Let's say... Because uh, I don't think it can go down $100. And if Let's it can, say I'll insane. call it. I'll call it right now. By okay. 2023... Uh-huh. They one, reach 150 million. Woo! Bring me back. Mark it on years. the calendar. Bring me back in three years. <laughs> <laughs> steak <laughs> dinner. Yeah, steak <laughs> dinner. I'll bet it won't. I think that'll be an easy bet. But, hey, I could be wrong, of course. If they maintain sales, like I, I don't said, know, PS4 has done good. really well for themselves. Of course, oh this, yes, this, uh, God, they ran away with it. Switch, yeah. of course, also doing really so, well yeah, with thirty six point nine. Yeah, good, for, good for them, of course. Um, that sums up all of our news story. We're gonna go to basically an um, an uh, opinion piece, and it's very important. What about that uh, that dashboard thing, man? I forgot about the dashboard yeah, thing. Yeah, bring yeah, that yeah, thing up. Bring that thing up. So yeah. we are, of course. Xbox heads, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know what whatever we're called. I know they're called Sony ponies. Are they really? Yeah. The only reason I know that is because it, it happened again. Alex, mute your damn. It, okay, first off, <laughs> I, mute, I muted it, but it's a different <laughs> mute, video, so I mute. It, I had to mute it again. No, so. mute your whole. I, I I did. I did. Mm, yeah, now you did. Anyways, I'm getting on my ass. Now. I completely forgot what I was on. Oh, uh, I think. What is it called? I forget what people are called. I know they're called Sony Ponies. The only reason I know that is because I follow a PlayStation podcast. That's weird. Um, we're called it. Uh, ah, forget. I don't know. Let's call us X Heads, Alex. <laughs> X Heads. X Heads. So yeah, all right, we're X Heads. So we follow a bunch of Xbox stuff. And okay. I noticed. Uh, I think it was three, four days ago that mm-hmm. they they didn't really announce. They just showed a new dashboard off with uh with the preview program that's on Xbox. If you guys don't know, there's a uh call uh, a thing called xbox insider and you essentially can put your system into the trial runs of um ui and updates stuff like that so if you're the there's tiers and there, it goes from all the way from like very first update like you're the first people to beta uh, to test this to alpha then betas and then all the way down to like oh you can get it right before the audience or you can just of course opt out of this uh, they the Alpha Insiders just got the a few days ago the new dashboard and it looks sleek. It looks yeah. really good. Yeah, the uh, the big um, the big new design or it, it pretty much gets rid of Cortana. Basically, so yeah, it's, it's only much. used with Alexa now. I think it's yeah. basically like you can attach an Alexa to it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, the, it looks um, good. It looks really good. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's phenomenal looking. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's way finally, less cluttered. I, th- I feel like people who don't play a lot of Xbox, because yeah. of course people do the thing where like, how do you know where everything is? And I'm like, how do you not? But of course I'm used yeah. to it. So I think this will help a lot of people because yeah. it's yeah, it's very it's so easy. To, it's it, very if you guys want a visual, if I remember correctly, Alex, you have your main screen. Mm-hmm. And most of it's clear. And on the bottom left corner, there are four kind of cubes. It's yep. my game's an app. What store? It's pins. Um, so you got the big sc- search. You got so you got your name at the top. Yep. You got the the big box usually where it says it yep. shows the main game. And, and it says uh, resume. Quick, quick quick thing. Uh, if you want to look the video up, just Xbox new dashboard. Yep. Twenty nineteen or whatever. I'm sure it'll come up. It's it's by Windows Central. I think it is. I don't remember. Mm. But go ahead. But it has the, your big game that you were playing or whatever. And mm-hmm. right underneath that, it'll have the four cubes you were talking about. And it's uh, Game Pass, Mixer, the uh, Game Store. And um, I can't see. I can't tell what the next, the bottom one is, but it looks like it's. I think it's like the friends list or, or community. It's community. Oh yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. So about it's community. it's it's pretty much each tab that was at the top, but there's no more tabs anymore. Now it's all into the it, it, it's in the main there, screen. Yeah. And it's just you can click each one and it has they have very nice transitions to each one. Nice. Very smooth. And, I heard um, it's a lot faster. Too. Yeah, it, from what the video shows, it's a lot faster. 
but pretty much it's just the main it's just one main dash there's no uh there's no uh tabs to you get tab over or move over it's just all right there uh your games you can hit right there your my games and apps it's right there Discover you can have the your discover thing or if you want to pin anything to home you just scroll, scroll down, down yeah. yeah it just scrolls down so it's just like a feed in a way but it's pretty cool so cool very excited you can to get see if, i mean if you're very into of, of changing your backgrounds a lot like i do i, I like am, changing yeah. them you can we see it a little better now in my mm-hmm. opinion you can mm-hmm. see it a lot more yeah because like all that back is now like open yeah. so you can see it all which yeah is awesome. so like it's like you know how before it used to have like that big kind of like grayish yeah. bar yeah. that's like that's not there anymore yeah dope very excited yeah very excited for the new update um always hype for me hitting my games and app and that thing opened immediately not like in like you know yeah. five seconds or something so the speed was already pretty good now it's gonna be great now now i'm gonna feel like i'm zooming mm-hmm. zooming and also i'm very excited to see if they i don't know if it's in yet but if you remember xbox was making a thing called start to where your games would load faster oh like yeah startup xbox, yeah so i'm curious if that's I, I haven't been following, so I'm, I'm curious if that's in yet or if that's, like, still being developed. I don't know. Mm. So there's an article on here that I, fi- I figured you're going to want to bring up. You haven't brought up unless uh, you're going so, to. Uh, thank you, Alex. I was. All right. Just want to make sure you... Ladies and gentlemen, I have to bring something back into the universe, and I have to keep giving it power because if I don't, it's going to die. Think about the sun. Think about the sun. It runs off a giant... A, a, basically, the sun is a giant atomic reaction constantly going off. And I need to make a sun out of Suikoden. Sun, Suikoden. All right? It goes tell, well together. So we're going to go into time. It's time to bring back Suikoden. This is by the beautiful Heather Alexandria over on Kotaku. Good, good for her for making quality content. This is required reading. Please read this. Uh, this is also called Total Recall, which is really cool, where they just talk about history and stuff. Um, I'm going to give a quick read through some of this, and then I need you guys to go. First off, go to the page. You click it, and then you read it. Then you say Suikoden four to five times. If we all do this repeatedly, eventually power goes into the universe to make this happen. It do you understand? It just comes to an existence, like the Big Bang. Yes. <laughs> yes. Suikoden. Eventually, you're going to hear, and then, then, and then in three, four minutes, Suikoden comes up. Yep. Konami's like, we heard your cries. Relax. Alex, or uh, Elijah, stop sending us the constant emails and, and begging. And <clears throat> maybe maybe when I get a little tipsy, harassment. Okay. We're making a Suikoden collection and we're going to make another Suikoden 5. Or they just sell the IP I, and let someone else do it. I feel like he'd die. Probably. Probably immediately that day get in a car wreck and kill myself or something. Oh, like. God. Anyways, Fire Emblem Three Houses is full of political intrigue, massive wars, and multiple perspectives of the same conflict. Alex, what does that sound like? I don't know. Like that it. sounds like Suikoden. Fire Emblem is Suikoden. If Fire Emblem can exist in this world, mm-hmm. Suikoden can too. Okay. I've made this podcast so I can just talk about Suikoden over and over again. Suikoden is a series owned by Konami. The first game was released in 1995 on the original Sony PlayStation. Suikoden 2 followed in 1998 and is often considered one of the best JRPGs of all time. The series focuses on various wars and has a heavy focus on world building and politics. Each war also involves semi-sentient magical crests called True Ruins, which holds great power and grants their users immortality. So we can show a lot of care for its world and characters, giving powerful motivations to villains and allowing the player to amass a large army with tons of unique individuals. Playing Fire Emblem Three Houses reminds me of Suikoden. This conflict, mass villains whose motivations were given time to understand, and a huge cast of characters. I love it, but it makes me yearn for my favorite RP, uh, JRPG series. Fire Emblem is Suikoden. If Fire Emblem can exist in this world, Suikoden can too. I'm going to go on a Twitter campaign that will last probably the rest of my life. Every Sunday of the of, of a month, I'm going to tweet at Konami to bring Suikoden back until it comes back. I'm just kidding. I'm not really going to do that. But that would be cool if I had the temperament to actually go through with that. You, well, you could. I'm sure you could. I'm sure I could, but that's really hard. <clears throat> I have to remember things. I'm, I'm busy. It's not, it's enough. <laughs> I got to play video games, man. Yeah, right. That's I, I'm still, I barely can do that. <laughs> I could barely do that. I want to. So, Alex, I'm gonna have to have you join me. All right. We're gonna say "sweek it in" five times, okay? All right. Sweek it in. 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 Sweek it. Squeak, squeak it. No. <laughs> we have to do it again now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's gonna be us for this week. That was awesome. We talked about titty streamers and how awesome they are. We talked about Grand Theft Auto exempting taxes. Good for them. 
Talked about Suikoden. Suikoden. <clears throat> Suikoden. Um, Xbox. <laughs> Xbox is new dashboard. <laughs> Talk about Fire Emblem. Everything under the sun. Thank you guys so much for listening in. If you like that, please support us. Patreon.com slash Achievers. That is an easy way to give us $1. That, of course, gives you our Patreon exclusive episode. That gives you um, able to post in our Patreon with the community. Um, we call ourselves the Achievers. Yeah, that's right. The Achievers. No one else got a cool name like that. You want to be an Achiever? Come, give us a dollar. Uh, if you don't want to give us money, please freeload. We don't care. Uh, five star us, like us, do all that stuff. Please, but not, everywhere. But not tomorrow, because we're going to be busy with Fortnite and other crap. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we have two things. We have to watch Call of Duty Call stuff, of Duty? and we have to do Fortnite. Yep. Um, very important. Glad you guys listened so far. Thank you so much. Um, uh, follow us on Twitter, at Easy Achievers, at EVM. That is for myself, Alex. At Crazy Flip Skater. Yep. Instagram as well, at EVM9000. Um, YouTube is up. Please go give our YouTube views so we can get it in that algorithm so we can get some more achievers in here, grow our community, podcast improves, etc., yep. etc. Et let us know how I did with the videos. If they suck, let me know. Yes. If there's a th- if there was an easier way to make thumbnails, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Alex kind of struggling with thumbnails. We've never done stuff like this before, yeah. so it's kind of just all... I don't know. I found that, that program. It's called Canva. It's actually pretty cool. Canva, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, so like I just I, I don't know how like a layout for a thumbnail should be. So I want opinions. I'm sure there's like, something hey, we can do this. Like, the, right? uh, the logo or the emblem should be like this. Mm-hmm. Opinions, guys. Let me know. Eventually, there's a specific thing I'm thinking of where like you you go to a website and you pay for like a class and they just teach you stuff. Yeah. Eventually, if we get more Patreon access, we'll take classes like that to yeah. to learn more stuff. I just want to like know that. what catches the eye. You know. Mm. We like need to hit up. Uh, you know what catches the eye? Mm. I see like in YouTube thumbnails a lot. It's usually bright colors and boobs. Or if it's not boobs, it's a it's it's a guy doing the the surprised wow face. Like oh, yeah, like just pretend one. to do that in your car. Just oh, I guess like, so. like, they just to pretend to do that, I and that's I'll every to, thumbnail. I guess we'll have to so put we our just face. On we the just thumbnail. need to put our face on there and just do like this. Yeah. I guess, and for I guess. audio answers, I'm, I'm doing the whoa face. So just just say whoa and then look stunned, and then that's what I'm doing. My dog just said, whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good day. Hit us up.